Welcome back, everybody, to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. I'm author and ghost historian Mike Ricksecker. With me, as always, is my co-hostess, Vanessa Hogel, and down in the chat room, Shauna, our chat shenanigator. We have a really special episode up for you tonight. We have Alexandra Holzer with us, daughter of Dr. Hans Holzer, who... You guys know from all the years I've been talking about him, very special to me, uh, very influential. But, you know, honestly, if there is anybody in the paranormal field that is considered paranormal royalty, it is this woman. We are extremely grateful for her coming on to talk about her new show, The Holzer Files, coming out this October. Alex, thank you for coming on. Pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Well, let's point out not just paranormal royalty. God, you guys are nuts. I did a little research. <laughs> you have a very impressive lineage in, in all aspects. Um, and I can't help but wonder, Mike, I'm diving right into it. And I know Go this for is it. your ball. I know you game, do it. Go for it. But she's my people. I did my research. She talks to the spookies. So we're like this. Okay. Um, I can't help but wonder if not just how your father was and what his the environment that, that, that he had you growing up in with his interest and everything. I can't help if it isn't just that, but if it's your lineage uh -huh. that also lends to your abilities and your interest in that, in this, what do you think? I love that you say that because oftentimes, you know, over the past, I don't know, 15 years, I've been at this now, like publicly, you know, I've had interviews and questions and so forth. And nobody's really asked about the marrying of the two backgrounds of the families because you've got dad on the left and we know who he is. And if we don't, well, we're saying who he is and we explain it and whatever. And then you've got my mother to the right. Her father was the Count of Russia and he was a blue blood and his family married into Catherine the Great. So my, my mother was named Catherine after Catherine the Great and we're considered blue bloods. And so... The, uh, we recently had another child. Yes, we're done. Thank you, God. Good Lord. Fuck that. But, <laughs> fine. but she, so to continue that lineage, her name is Catherine. That's so Catherine. Oh, very nice. But so he was a Russian count and he held seances up in a castle in Mihano, Italy. And, um, you know, so that's on my grandfather's side. So, you know, it's, it's both of them together. And then, you know, it's just, it's really bizarre. But, but it's beautiful and it's not uncommon for royalty, for families of, of such high esteem to have those what we would consider skeletons in the closet. They have that different way of looking at things and it's very magical and very mysterious and very superstitious. Mm -hmm. So right. you have to in order to give you full credit for how you are now, you have to give credit to both the sources. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, I, that book, I like that. Haunted, I, it's about, and I think so, some people are so pissed off. There's nothing haunted about this at all. I'm like, well, my God, it's, it's, if you read it, you can, okay, well, we don't know who's reading what these days, so whatever. But, you know, when this came out, you know, people thought it was going to be about ghost cases and investigating it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> right there it He's is. the best. He's the best. But it's, it's about both sides of the family because, you know, I mean, my mother is on the barren side of the family for Bucks Hoven and we still have the family crest. There's lots of family crests, you know. I mean, I have an interest actually in, in other things like um, lost civilization, mud floods and so forth. But um, it, it talks about your lineage and we all have something. But in, in our family, it is, it's kind of interesting because he held seances He's the Count of Russia. Then you know, it's before the war hits. He's a man without country. So he's, you know, running around espionage and God knows what. And then there's my father. My mother marries my father. Now, my grandparents, my grandmother married uh, my grandfather. They were 20, part, 20 years apart in age. Mm -hmm. And then her daughter, my mother, married my father. They were 20 years apart in age. And so Nana, my grandmother, had said to me that it's, it's, it's a continuation. I said, are you sure it's not a curse? I says, because we've got a lot of things going on in the family. This is happening. That's happening. She's like, no, 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 darling. She was from Paris, by the way. So she talked like this. So she said, something happened in the family. We repeat cycle. Be interesting to see what you do. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. That is fabulous. But, you know, I, that's, okay. Nobody wants to know about that stuff. You know, that's I do. Like, well, because you asked. Yeah. Now, all that's asked. fascinating. It, it is. It is. Richard III is my great time 16 grand uncle. I'm a direct descendant of Henry Tudor and Elizabeth Plantagenet. I love it. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's so cool. 
Yeah, I just I, I love her already, Mike. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. So go. Uh, well, just real quick, got to do a couple of admin things here. We had a, a few super chats that were thrown down. Uh, Spooky, that's Don with uh, ten dollars super chat. Tom McNicholas, a five dollars super sticker. A little cat saying hi. And uh, Lambie Pie twenty five. She says thanks for a fantastic show. Uh, much love to you all from Pam. That was a fifteen dollars super chat. So thank you all for thank the support. You. Always appreciate that. So. Uh, um, Alex, let, let's get into it. Um, you have the, the new show coming out, The Holzer Files, which is supposed to be uh, cracking into some of your father's old cases. So what can we expect from this show? Um, well, basically, it's it's reopening some of his cases and going back and doing another investigation to see what still is there and, and more to the story from where my father was before. And, you know, it, it's an amazing time because it's, it's been 10 years since he passed this year that this opportunity came up with uh, travel channel and the interest to incorporate his footage you know and um audio and visual into the actual casework itself and and reintroduce to a new audience who he still is you know um he he was a vital role in the field and um cultivated many protocols and the Holzer method to, you know, to name a few. And so this opportunity is to, you know, share with everybody, you know, all this work that he did that he got on film and, you know, uh, correlated to what he then put down into books, which, you know, he also wrote about. So he was a lot of everything, you know, he wasn't your typical investigator. So, um, it's really nostalgia. It's, it's kind of, to me, it reminds me of in vain of like a stranger things kind of where you're going back in time, right? you know, and you've just got people kind of trying to like find out, solve the mysteries of it. So interesting. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I've, I've always called your father, you know, one of the founding fathers in the modern paranormal field. Cause really to me, it was, you know, way back in the day you had Harry Price, then it was your father. And then, you know, you had like the Warrens and everybody coming in, but everybody's talking about the Warrens these days because the movie. So I find it wonderful that finally something's going to be done with your, with your father. Cause he was really like the first academic that came forward and said, yes, I believe in this stuff started doing right. these investigations and started writing about it. And what is it like over 150 books? It's 145, 145, I believe 11 okay. went into reprints. Um, and, you know, and he obviously covered many subjects, you know, in psychics, mediumship, you're dealing with witches, the craft, the occult, UFOs, you know, um, spiritualism, healing, you know, and then he wrote also fiction, you know, it was an amazing <laughs> writer, he was a creative too. And I think, I think sometimes people have a hard time understanding that because, you know, he's not anything you could replicate today. I, his own daughter, have so many parts of him that I, I find myself emulating him and my mother. She was an artist, you know, but he was who he was. And that's just not going to happen again. Do you know what I mean? And it's not supposed to, but you can take from that and learn and grow. And, you know, for me, it's very personal because it's part right. of the family work that can and this show is, is, to me, the tip of the iceberg to finally get him out there with, you know, the travel channel is just, you know, it's very humbling to have that opportunity and um, let people see, let them experience now, it. Now, can I ask you real quick, and, and I don't I don't know why I'm asking it, but I'm going to do it anyway. There were two particular cases that he had that he felt were connected and they were completely separate, but he felt that they were connected. Is that something that you guys are going to address mm -hmm. with the show? Yeah. You know the exact two I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, and, and it's a really interesting thing, and it's an important thing to bring up and, and have it in the show because oftentimes there's a lot of similarities that people are experiencing from different parts of the world or environments that are having strange phenomena happen. And, you know, it may not be a place that he went to, but it's the same parallel um, research that he found somewhere else. In other words, it makes perfect sense because you just don't have a concentrated area of happenings. There's a whole planet Earth, and then we have what's around us, and there's other life forms and species, things that we don't even can't even comprehend. Maybe we do, we just can't talk about it. I don't know, disclosure. But anyway, getting back to it, <laughs> um, the point being is that, you know, it, it, it's like, 
just because I haven't been somewhere, but I have an experience here doesn't mean I can't understand what's happening to you over here because they, they, they run parallel, they correlate. It's the same it's, energy, yeah. the same thing, different place, different person, same story. All about connectivity. The whole reason behind it is us finding our connectivity. That's right. And and learning to understand and have compassion for each other, both living and dead. That's, yeah. Yeah. Empathy, empathy, respect and awareness. And, you know, uh, you know, things have changed over time. We know that they're going to continue to change. But when you have somebody like my father, you know, he becomes to me iconic and he should be at some point and it's not vanity it's not you know but he he earned that place he worked for that everything revolved around the unknown and and the unbelievable to the explainable and even that to some people they couldn't understand you know he, he really cared to get the word across to everybody that would listen mm -hmm. and on any platform he could and that's how you reach the masses because it was so important to get the messages out there, live a good life, be a good person. There is good. There is bad. Don't bring religion into it. Yada, da, 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 da. Exactly. Yeah. One last thing on that. And then I'm going to shut up. Um, no, I have no, to tell you. Go ahead, Vanessa. You're fine. Called. You're fine. Um, I got some questions in. You're good. Yeah. Don't tell the Southern fellow <laughs> over there to shut up. We're going to have problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half Southern. I can do this. <laughs> Yes. Okay. okay. On those on those two cases, the two cases yep. that I'm talking about, and I don't know what they are, but I have to tell you that somebody just yelled in my head, he was right because he had a theory on them. And mm -hmm. his theory is correct. Mm -hmm. So take that and run with it. Yeah, no, no. And I think that's awesome because hopefully it'll it'll get people more excited to see the that episode. You know, there's just um there's just so much there, you know, it's like being a teacher and then the teacher is not physically here anymore, but they are like, he, he comes and he communicates with us and there's a whole yes. document and it's just like, we don't share it because it's personal for us. We don't need to prove it to anybody. Oh, here comes Hans Holzer. Sure. That's the kid. Of course she's going to do that. <laughs> fuck you. And fuck you. Yeah, Wait, I'm not awesome. that person. Do you know what I'm saying? You can go back yes. and see all my posts from what when MySpace became Facebook. I don't know anymore. I know, right? But you know, we've been online for a long enough time that you can long go time. back and see how people, long time, too long. You can hear people if they're doing radio or, or writing. You know, people do change and they have a right to change their opinions. My father changed over the years and started to really work with, with mediums more and, and have an awareness that they're, they're experiencing something that he can't. doesn't mean he's not able to. It's just in that moment in time, it wasn't his role, mm -hmm. but he didn't poo poo it, you know, and then later in life, he became very open and aware where he was able to tell of the uh, appearance of my late aunt coming to my then uncle after she had just passed and he saw what happened in the bedroom and he was recounting it and my uncle was like, he just slipped down into the couch like, because he couldn't believe it. We were like, how did you know that daddy? I don't know. It just came to me. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That is exactly what it is. People always ask me, who gives you your messages, Vanessa? What angel is it? I don't fucking know. I just know it. Just, you know, things, you know, and it's, it's no different than going in for a job interview and you either like the person that's talking to you or you don't. It's either going to have an energy or, and if you don't, then you must be dead. You got to feel something. Exactly. That's you're protecting in light. You have to have some kind of awareness. And when you walk out that door, you, you, you know, people just, they kind of go through life like do, 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 do. Everything's fine. No, yeah, it's not. not this gal. <laughs> always something waiting around the corner. You just don't know it yet. And if not, and you're one of those blessed people, what do you say? Bless you. That's bless. a bad word. Oh, bless, bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. <laughs> Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, just you You have to be aware. You have to be awake. And that is the paranormal. It's all of it. It's all connected. Yeah. Bless your heart and hug your neck. Oh, that's a new oh, one. Geez. I'm going to tell my Hug your neck, sugar. Hug your neck, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Y'all are not. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> yeah. What's your question? The comedy stylings. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> the way yeah. it ought to be. Ghosts and jokes and everything in between. Yes. Because yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's a time to be serious. Listen, we have bills to pay. We have children to raise, health issues. 
family members, no family members, you know, job problems, you know, it's like this field has a place for it to be serious because we're trying to, we're trying to get evidence, evidence for, yes, there's life after death. And, and this is what happens sometimes when we're stuck and there's other forces at hand. And what if it is another life force that's doing ESP and it's not a ghost that just really have to broaden the spectrum as to what's around us. True. And it's not always so defined. Linear. Sometimes it can be, you know? Yeah. But th that's life. That's it. And you also have to have humor, a sense of humor, because people are uncomfortable, and especially in situations if you're dealing with haunting, if somebody's uncomfortable. So, you know, somebody tell a joke, you know, I mean, there's, it's okay. <laughs> I promise you, the other side is laughing with us. And if not, they're probably grumpy when they pass. Mm -hmm. That's not my problem. We are who we are. You're absolutely right. You're at, I had a spirit come to me on the toilet. He was sitting on the toilet under oh, a spotlight. Lord. Oh, good Lord. He was being funny to break the ice. It happens. It happens. Bless what, him. What, what are the... Um, Great quotes that I, I found from your father and, and reading through some of his different interviews was he didn't like the word supernatural because he said to him, everything was natural. It, it, and, and, you know, and I love that word supernatural because it sounds so strong. And then they have a show that came out, remember, Supernatural. And it, right. it, it sounds great. But in reality, it's nature. Yeah. Isn't it natural to to pass on and either be stuck for for many different reasons on how we die, or just being a stubborn soul that doesn't want to leave and therefore they're just going to stay? Uh, you know, isn't that it, it's it's horrible, but it's a natural process of what happens in death. You, there's no written rule of how you're going to die and which way you're going to go. And there's a hierarchy. My father believed in that wherever you end up is dependent on how you lived your life you know, and what lessons you still have to learn, then we get into reincarnation. So it's all natural because we, we're kind of like recycling like a can of Coke. You know, yeah. the generations go on and on. It's all energy. Energy keeps going. You can't stop and kill energy. Right. You yeah. know, and so so the supernatural, it's it's natural. It's, it's nature. It's science and it's nature. Awesome. I agree. Absolutely. So we have some questions down here in the chat room. I do want to get to a few of these. Um, from Michelle Hamilton, she's asking, uh, for the upcoming show, will they try to match what, this, uh, what the psychic said to the historical record? Um, basically, um, you know, I haven't seen any of it, so I can't speak too much <laughs> about it. But, um, you know, their job is to, to go and see what's happening in the current time now and versus what my father's findings were. And yes, it goes to matching with historical record because this is how we kind of see what his findings were and his correlation and so forth with what the new findings would be. So it's a blending of the old and the new. Okay, and the uh, the team real quick. So our friend Dave Schrader's heading this up, right? So um, can you talk a little bit about the team? Yeah, well, uh, the Travel Channel um, got the team together to do the investigations. And myself and Gabe Roth, who's also um, in the industry, is a researcher as well, and producer and so forth. And I come in and we um, kind of sort through things, you know, and we're that kind of like helping, um, you know, and then the rest of it, you know, I don't know. I mean, I have to, you know, I haven't seen it, but um, it's, it's a kind of a, a storytelling and having authentic uh, footage and audio from dad, you know, and it's, it's something that you're just not going to see anywhere else, you know, because we've opened that up and we're sharing and, you know, the travel channel is able to bring that to everybody now, you know, coming in October. So pretty neat. This is, I'm, I have to tell you one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this and it's going to sound a little bit silly, but I, I liken what your dad did to a scene in the movie sixth sense mm -hmm. and that is when bruce willis is going back through the old tapes of when he was taping a child during a session he has to leave the room and comes back years later he's listening to these and he catches the voice on that tape that's not a a, a app on a phone right that's not a box made in somebody's garage that they're selling for eleven hundred dollars that's that it's not any of that it's old school mm -hmm. you can't fuck with it <laughs> investigation right. what it is yeah you know it's a, that's why i love the polaroid cameras 
mm-hmm. it, it comes out what it is. You yes. Know? And um, I have a lot of his Polaroids, you know, for example, and it, it's, Ugh. they're phenomenal, you know, and again with today, and that's where I get really frustrated. And of course, you know, um, he would be equally as frustrated you know, it's these apps and this, everybody's posting this and you don't know what's authentic because you're not there. If you're not mm-hmm. in the environment, that's why, you know, he put down in his books what the lighting was, the speed, the film speed, what type of camera he used, um, who was present, um, what day of time it was. It was so important to, to document your findings in that way too. So you're not just taking pictures and, and filming, you're also writing down what you're doing and what your environment is. You know, so we know when when I go and I do research, I know we call it investigating. But for me, I'm researching uh, a story, a situation that's being told to me. So I'm going to go and get the history on it, kind of like what dad did, you know. And the whole the whole point of it is to, you know, get every bit of information as you can and document before Mm -hmm. running around and and trying to capture something and saying, I think this is what it is. And then when you feel it, well, then document that as well everything is critical to that, you know? And so nowadays, again, like with the apps, you know, and then you don't know if somebody's fooling around with something, you know, I mean, I, I listen, I fell victim to that. I don't even know this guy who was from Australia. He had an amazing YouTube channel. I mean, it's like, I began one years and years ago, you know, my manager patient is like, it's a good idea. Just put yourself out there. I'm like, okay. Hi everybody. (laughs) (laughs) What am I doing? What is this? Here's my dog. You know, so uh, <laughs> so this guy had this amazing YouTube channel in Australia where his apartment, the TV, the big flat screen TV, he's got the camera set up. He's showing you where everything is, went right down. And he, he goes and takes his camera and goes underneath the piece of furniture that the TV was standing on. There's no wires, just like, like nothing. Then the couch flips over. And then in another room, it looks like a kid's room. You know who I'm talking about? And then there's a kid's room where there's a stuffed animal. I'm assuming because it's a stuffed animal. I'm like, okay, I guess he has a kid. Because you don't get any personal information about him whatsoever. And there's this teddy bear and the eyes start to move. Okay. I'll be like, fuck you, I'm out of here. I don't know. <laughs> You're just done. <laughs> don't do teddy bears. So. Yeah. Um, but it went on and then it went on into his garage or basement and then workplace where these huge buckets were sliding across the basement floor. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. It's almost like you would want it in a film. It was so amazing. And it's like, I sat there and I said, I don't know if this is real or not. I want it to be real because it's, it's amazing strength and power that this entity is creating, which then becomes that scary. Now what? But he's living there. And, you know, and and then I learned that you can make money on YouTube. And I started thinking, I'm wondering if that's what's going on. I don't know. Yeah. But it's an, he's an Australian guy. I don't know. It was years ago. Well, I mean, I, I have to tell you that I, and as much as I would love to believe I'm still a skeptic at heart, and I would have, I would have to question it as well, simply because having done this for 45 years, I'm 47. I've Very talked not. to the dead for 45 years. You're like 23. Oh, bless you. And I mean, <laughs> bless my heart, lady. <laughs> I'm not blessing your heart. I'm mwah, big kisses to you. But I, the, the, I know how much it takes for the spirits that I've come into contact with to move something minuscule. So to, to be able to do that much over and over is a lot. Can you imagine? A lot. I mean, it's like, you know, coming coming through that moment saying, I don't have any hands. I have no eyes. What do I got to work with here? You know, mm-hmm. it's like, it's it's really, it's crazy. You know, and like, you know, my husband and I, we have things happening in, in our room because that's where we, you know, we talk to dad and everything. Um, but it's it's not, you know, it's not haunted. It's not a haunting. It's, it's the presence of him and moments of conversations where something will be in the middle of talking about something and we're frustrated or something and then you know a book moves off the shelf you know one of the kids come in we have this bucket that pings i kid you not it's an ice bucket there's a whole story there um oh my god i, I people think I'm crazy but i can't go into it but um it's become an icon in our room and it'll go off at all 
times of the day at night because you go time doesn't exist for them mm -hmm. it really pisses me off by the way because we're trying to sleep we've got <laughs> girl that doesn't like to sleep and ping and i'm like what <laughs> you got to be kidding me <laughs> no no communication nothing you know so the children will come in, you know, and they'll be like, mom, blah, 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 ping. And there's different levels of pinging because it's the bucket. So we've, we've done talcum powder. We've tested it. The, um, in the morning, you know, after that we had a ping, it was like two weeks, it's quiet. Then it pings. And then, you know, we, so we said, we're going to do a talcum powder. So, so the talcum powder sat there for like two weeks and I'd be over there. I'm like, hmm. then one day it pings. So we go and we look at it and it moved, the powder had moved. Hmm. So there's a vibration from spirit. Mm -hmm. that's creating it and there's different levels so there's different spirits that are coming in and out of our room creating these different echoes you know interesting uh, or like i wonder if that's your grandfather i wonder if that's my dad and you know because we're we're an open channel because we have to be this is our family our lineage yes. it's it's going to go on this way we are really a living adam's family and it's really mm -hmm. nutty and and so you know i don't like i can't talk to the, our kids moms from school like i don't do that thing <laughs> what are you gonna say? Oh, do you want to do the Tupperware party next week? No, I'm gonna go ghost hunting and see if the bucket ping. I don't. Want to <laughs> you know what? Well, hard I would. To yeah. I would. I. I. That is a. Yeah, I've kicked the door. I've kicked the door off, and there's I don't. There's gotta be a few moms out there now. that are into the spooky shit. Come on. Yeah. Uh, there. There's now. I mean, you know, especially with the show coming out now, there've been you know a lot of. Um, people in the school that you know know who I am over the years and give books you know whatever but um they are there and you know and actually it's interesting more into mediumship than anything hmm. else you know um and it's mostly the women that I'm connecting with you know so um no offense Mike no none taken <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah. so, well damn <laughs> you know listen man I haven't slept in 20 years I don't know what you want from me no it's all good <laughs> you know, like, but yeah so you, there's just so much to this and it's great with the show it's awesome you know but there's so much more and it's, it's like everything else like you know in a case it's layered you have to peel it away like an onion yeah you know, it's, it's really kind of like the mantra you know I'm excited and I don't get excited about paranormal shows. I'm fucking excited about yours. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, I, I think it's great to go back in time and have that footage being restored and shared with everybody. And, and those that don't even know who Dr. Hans Holzer is, you know, introducing to that next generation, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's really great. Yeah, and I think that's important because I think there's been a, a large gap here uh, between people that were familiar with him, like, you know, me reading his books growing up. And, you know, you had all the paranormal shows that have been out for the last 15, 20 years that did not include him. So people have been inundated with other people and kind of forgetting about your father. So I think it's fantastic that now a whole new generation is going to be introduced to him and people getting reintroduced to him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember him now. So. Yeah, you know, and then it's like my whole thing is now pick up a book. Yeah, pick up a book. Part. And as a, you know, and and as a mom, you know, and as an educator too, you know, pick up a book. Let's go back old school. I'm all about old school, man. You know, like yes. I said with the Polaroid, and you know, we have his old tape recorders. I think you can fix them, but I might just go and just get another one because they still have them. You know, they still mm -hmm. sell them like on eBay or whatever. We walk around and just start using that as well. You know, just because it's it's the whole point of is the frame of mind. We've, we've lost that in this in this generation, in this cycle that we're in, that hopefully we're getting out of. You know, is um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, exactly. Uh, we do have uh, some questions down in the chat room. Uh, one that's kind of pertinent to what we're talking about uh, now. Um, from Betty Lange, uh, how much control does the Travel Channel have over the show? So what can we expect to see from uh, what's going to be be presented from your father well um they're gonna it's um well you see like they have a commercial running so in that commercial you see the some footage of him with Sybil Leak, who was the Irish medium and um Regis Fieldman at the Whaley house okay. you know that's the old, like footage like you know um that's all part of it that's wrapped up into the show and which makes it so unique and then you know revisiting some of his old cases 
and finding out what they found out. You know, very cool. So, uh, a couple other. Qu- uh, Go ahead, Vanessa. Just real quick. Um, did he have a case that involved a ballerina, or was there one in your family? I'd have to. Well, it's, it's, it looks it looks like the the one on top of a jewelry box, but I think that's right. just the way that I'm seeing it. Like a dancer. Yeah, ish. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't, but you know, as a fellow medium, I'm going to sit on that information. Please do. And also, I'll give you my email and just okay. write to me and we can try to sift through what you're saying because it might be something else that you're, you're pulling on. It may not just be for the, the cases or the show, it could be something else. It's Did familial. I, yeah, exactly. I'm like a kid. <laughs> I love mediums. Oh my God. I'm a, and I and I help people too, but when it becomes me, I'm like, what do you see? Yeah, it's it's familial. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. All right. I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> You're done. Back to you, Mike. Back to me. All right. Back to Mike in the studio. All right. Yes. <laughs> um, something I do uh, want to ask you about. I mean, and I know everybody. Uh, goes here but i i want to do a little bit of a, a different take so i know everybody asks you because your father was involved uh with amityville so do you get tired of those questions honestly uh, of because that always seems to come up amityville. right and i get it i totally get it you know i don't fault people for asking that i think it's also become something of a cult but um you know my whole thing is it's it's just so sad you know because there's and there's situations that like what happened in Amityville that happened elsewhere that are actually even more brutal and right. more body counts, you know, so we keep that in perspective. It's not the end all be all of a, of, a, of a crime scene that this horrific murder went down, but there is a story there. And, you know, his whole research into Amityville, once he got the call and if he would be interested to go out and then he chose Ethel Johnson Mayers for that particular case. Cause you know, he worked with all sorts of different mediums. And rightfully so, with like with other people that were researchers, you know, um, to to research the land, the property, talk to the town historian, the mayor, really get his hands into why why did this happen? What could have gone wrong? You know, because it wasn't just about Ethel picking up what she picked up, but it was about sometimes places are rotten or haunted or are just not good energy low vibration and can create more negative energy. So if you put a house on top of a bad parcel, chances are, and then a family comes in that's got issues already and dysfunctions and abuse, that's a, that's a formula for something bad to happen. So that part of it to me always interested myself on the case with his work that, you know, it really went further than just his findings. And a lot of people either believe or don't believe. I wasn't there, so I won't right. speak to that. You know, but I, I do believe that, you know, Ethel went into her trance and got what she got. And, you know, Long Island, you know, it's like, I mean, there's a lot of history. And oh, sure. Why would be Native American Indian spirit? You know, it's, it's not really that far-fetched. But um, that part of it, because it's historical to me, it's research. It's, it's trying to put the pieces together more than anything else because the rest of it is the murders and then you know yeah which was you know really the the big game of the horror with all the murders um but i found some of your father's uh research and that historic research fascinating because he was going back you know to an original house that had been there in the 1700s and then um you know and just watching some of his interviews and i guess what was it 1905 where like the bone was found and where some of the disturbances really started happening so i found all of that really fascinating and i think a lot of people forget that and they just focus okay there were murders and then right. the lutz's crazy story and well, and, 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 and so the thing is, people always confuse. Is your father the one with the Lutzes? I said, oh, yeah. God, no. The Honestly, fails. people, you can go online and see it. And I don't mean to be that way, but it's exhausting. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, right. just take the time and look it up. And, and then you can find the information. We're well, sending you, I'll answer it. You are a part of Ryan Katzenbach's um, Shattered Hopes uh, yeah. series. And I thought that was really well done. It really was. And Ryan, and he's doing great. And he's a good. really good documentarian you know and i'm the only paranormal part in that which yeah. was the running joke he's like oh you're the only like <laughs> in this. but i you know we shot it very seriously and like a q a and and 
to give respect to my father. So even though this is a documentary that really flips the coin there on the case and the findings that they have and, and what's going on, and most people might say, well, that goes against what your father would have. No, it doesn't. It's apples to oranges. My father wasn't, you know, a police officer on the scene. Right. He wasn't a crime investigator. He went in there with the medium, and she got what she got. And there is history to that land and that property and those that were in that area back in the day, you know. And, and it's it's just kind of one of those things, you know. So it was a nice thing that we did that because that documentary really is the most – unparanormal thing you could watch it's it really, really is crime. it's crime and murder and deceit yeah. and, and lies and the whole thing yeah but a fantastic documentary and, and ed asner yeah. does the narration and he has a fantastic voice i, love, and, I know yeah. he's great he God is. Bless him. he's still working yeah. is he that's great I, he's always on the tv i don't know my husband like wow is that ed asner I said, yeah <laughs> so on a lighter note betty, uh, betty lange has a question here um how did Dr. Holzer relax at home or did he? <laughs> well, that was my witch laugh. Not good. No, I perk on it. I perk on it. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's uh, no, no. <laughs> that's better. Yeah. That's creepy. <laughs> Vanessa's good at that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so basically, dad kind of um, had to have his TV time. And so he would sit in the living room. And we had, you know, remember the old TVs with the kind of, some of them look like pieces of furniture. And then oh, we yeah. Had, oh, had one of those. Oh, yeah. Those. Yeah. Then we migrated to the little legs, you know, but, um, so he would always have the TV on. It was always blaring. So you could hear it throughout the apartment. We had a seven bedroom apartment in Manhattan. Whoa. Over the, uh, overlooking the Hudson river. I mean, it's, well, it was rent controlled. Do you, you know uh, what I'm saying? When yes. my parents got it, that's, you know, how that began. So, um, that's the only reason why we were there. But um, so he would watch Benny Hill. You'd hear him like laughing, ha, 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 like that, you know? <laughs> and it was just kind of like, I'm on the phone with like a friend, dad, could you not do that laugh? You know, and he'd be like, oh, Alex, don't worry. I'm having fun. You know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then he always, he always watched the Oscars. You know, he was so funny because he, he made his own films, you know, documentaries and things like that. But I think he always wanted to be a filmmaker too, get hmm. his work out onto the big screen, you know. So he would always watch the Oscars and he would be like, you know, the, the commenter on the couch saying, that wasn't good. That was a piece of shit by that <laughs> did I <laughs> Oh, I love oh, it. Oh, that's that awesome. Actually, she's good. She might be psychic. I don't know. I mean, this went on for the whole time <laughs> the show was on. So he, that relaxed him and he always made coffee, you know, first thing in the morning, then he would have coffee brewing at night and then the phone would, yes, yes. I can, I can, I'm getting old. I can only do it in the morning. Ah, okay. Then I just get like, ugh, I can't, but, um, we're actually pretty close in age. So <laughs> I feel, listen, I'm almost, I feel like I'm almost halfway to 50. I'm right there. I'm 48. I'm two years away from 50. No fucking way. Fucking way. I swear. Wow. To so I can't, I can't eat everything I feel to eat anymore. Yeah, that happens. It sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> it? Yeah, so, but he would have the coffee brewing at night. And um, he loved British comedy, you know. Um, he also loved Peter Sellers. He actually got me oh, into yes. the Panther films because my parents were friends with P one of Peter Sellers' really good friends out in France, you know. Oh, very so, cool. in Europe a lot when I was little. And so he was good friends with his good friend and I grew up loving Peter Sellers and I would always mimic him, you know, Inspector Clouseau, you know, and I would just, I would do scenes from the movie and I would entertain the whole family. My father would just do the ha ha laugh. You, know? <laughs> you would be an absolute hoot to travel with. Yeah. I've, I, yeah. I've been all over England, Scotland and Ireland doing investigations and I've written about it. Awesome. I would love to go with you. Let me tell you, it's it would. Let me tell you, I can't get through security when I I was doing vegan for a while to honor mm -hmm. dad and think maybe there's something to it. And I brought peanut butter, and I was flying out to L.A. years and years ago, and they took my peanut butter. <gasps> oh my I, gosh! They, uh, peanut like, butter. Peanut butter, 
And they said, you can pick, pick this up in whatever, you know, I can't, whatever, you know, but you can go get this in customs. Where I said, absolutely not. I'll miss my flight. I was so angry because I was really trying to stick to, to the veganism. And so every time I, I travel, there's always something that happens. Mm -hmm. Last time I traveled, I was traveling for the show. I went out to Los Angeles and I was wearing my favorite boots that my mother gave me. They're from the 90s. Okay. Like uh -huh. I, I'm a nostalgia chick. I don't like modern anything. I really don't. Um, so I got my boots on. I'm, I'm sitting in the seat. It's a long ass flight. And I'm like, oh, my ass is getting numb. What do I do? So I'm trying to move my legs up and down, trying to get comfortable. And then we finally land. I'm like this, talking to my father. Please let us all land. I, this is what I do when I travel. Daddy, please, if you're here, listen to me. Keep us all safe. You know, even the guy with the, the stinky feet next to me <laughs> took off the shoe. He can survive too. And um, so we land. And I'm so excited to just get off the damn plane, you know that my boot gets stuck because I must have jammed it so far under the seat that I didn't realize that there's things under there. Oh, and it no. pulled off oh my, my whole body of my soul. So when I went to go and film, I, my whole thing came, I was hobbling. Hey, y'all. Oh, no. <laughs> Aren't I cool? So, yeah, Oops. there's always something that happens to me. Same. It just, it's just, yeah, you know, it's like just for once I'd like to travel and have nothing. Boring just boring no issue just yeah, something that's uneventful not, that's not yeah that's yeah, not, not gonna happen. happen by the way i took peanut butter to ireland how did oh. you get it i i you carried it, it in, in i know right i put it in my uh my checked baggage oh see i wasn't mm. trying to check it i, I was yeah. i'm like an old woman hoarding like everything i'm like i took i took peanut butter and jelly to ireland <laughs> wow i sure did so, that's, that's what you do when you travel broke that's, yeah. yeah well but I don't check anything. I yeah. swear to God, it's like I just try to get it all in, you know, where my, my bras are starting to crinkle together. And then yeah. I don't, right, it's so bad. And then when you leave <laughs> to work, then you wonder why. Well, maybe you shouldn't have packed more than one bag, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> So, Alex, we only have you for a, a few more minutes here. Uh, we have a couple of comments and questions I want to get to real quick here. Uh, first of all, $10 super chat from Spooky. That's Don. She says, awesome show, awesome guest. Thank you very much, Don. Comment from Shauna. I totally thought she was in her 30s but could easily pass for late 20s. So, True story. There you go. Yeah, You're Alex. gorgeous. <laughs> I told you that before the show. I'm going to take yes. all of you with me and we'll all travel together. There you yes. go. I'll be like... <laughs> yeah so uh well, you know I, I don't really sleep much that's a problem i need to catch up on sleep at some point but i, I keep do, saying I that too or I'll, I'll just say i'll sleep when i'm dead so you know yeah right well you know there's that yeah there's that but yeah it's i i care about myself enough i try to you know i go food shopping i dress nicely i that's just how i was raised you know mm -hmm. it was always you 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 know have some respect for yourself and you know right a um, couple questions here real quick. Tom McNicholas, uh, I was wondering, did you ever investigate with your father? I get that question. That's a good question. Um, no, because he did not want me to be around that environment, but he brought it home. So it's kind of like was annoying because it came back into the apartment at times, mm -hmm. attachments and people sitting on my bed and then they're gone, you know, and, and but he, he and I would sit down and we'd theorize and we'd have lengthy conversations. We went through his books we used to watch family uh, footage on, uh, we had the reel to reel, Pam, that's mm -hmm. nostalgia. Yeah. And we'd watch our family, you know, we'd have family night, we'd watch all the, the footage and stuff. And he would talk about, you know, if he was in Europe and if he was investigating and what he found. So we, we had more of an intellectual conversation versus out in the field and working. I knew how he worked. I had all the equipment at the house. I knew what he did. He had like, you know, five recorders, seven cameras, you know, everything was different sizes, different this, different lighting, different colleagues. And then they would come to my home. Hmm. So it was almost like he brought the investigations home. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. You know, but he, you know, I've, I've learned everything from him and watching him and then watching how he would deal with people when they would come over a potential medium to, to see if he would work with them, you know, phone calls across seas, you know, I mean, talking to, he was talking to somebody in Japan, he answered the phone, mushy, mushy. <laughs> what is mushy, mushy? I mean, you know, he was, you know, he knew the Japanese language, you know, he was so smart and so, you know, studied, you know. So I wish I could have, but at the same time, I think we would have been at each other's throats. 
because you probably said, quiet, Alex, I know what I'm doing. Because then <laughs> Alex would have been like, as an Aries, if we believe in astrology, I would have been like, I don't think so. No, 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 no. We need to stop and go over here. He would have shut that down. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. best that we would have. And then uh, real quick from Tanya Rogers, kind of a follow-up to that. She says, I've read so many of his books. Glad she's carrying on the tradition. Uh, what would your father think of your work now? Well, I know he's he's happy. He's been pushing me for a long time not to give up. He, you know, comes through a lot. I have dreams, and then I have to piece together those dreams. You know, <coughs> it's, it's frustrating because sometimes I wake up and I'm too groggy. But I know we're on a path and it's still gonna go so this is kind of like a part of that path but there's so much work to be done and this is what he wanted you know and it, we you know when he was alive he's like you continue on and he, we actually wrote a pilot together for a tv show oh okay. back in the early 2000s and we had a guy from san diego was interested and he was going to have me you know go out in the field and he would you know be on the computer I said daddy you don't even know how to work the computer <laughs> Got <laughs> dust on it. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, that's true. And it just didn't make sense. You know, it's like, but he he wanted me to have it because he never had a son. So he has two daughters, and he loves the girls. You know, he's like, you know. But I asked him when I was little. I said, did you always want a boy? You know, kids ask mm-hmm. questions. Sure. You know? And he goes, no, because I have two beautiful daughters, and you publish now as Holzer. This is good. This this uh, is my, you know. And that's uh, where I that's started. Sweet. I changed, you know, when I had, you know, gotten married that I I kept my name Holzer. And that was way back early 2000. I knew that was that was the path that I was going to be. I just didn't know. It's a lot of struggles throughout the way. You know, it's it's um, times have changed. So, you Um, uh, you know, I got to throw this out there real quick before you lose you before uh, we lose you. If this is him, he said in the next five years, you're actually going to fulfill his dream of being on the big screen. And you already have the storyline to be able to do that. You just have to adapt it. You have to tweak it just a little bit and adapt the ending um, to what it was in the beginning. Oh, my God. I have to talk to you. You're going to make me cry. Uh, okay. We'll have to uh, exchange information because uh, I, I, nobody reads me. You know, I'm trying to help people, but I would like to, to – but it's – you know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah. yeah. Anytime. And you're you're somebody that I feel connected with. When people say, oh, your father's come through, I'm like, I sit there and I'm like, well, fucking shit. Honestly, <laughs> he's going to be selective. And it's not going to be who you think. Yeah. I wasn't expecting this tonight. I'm doing this. For the I wasn't time. either. And I, no. And I'm doing this because this is what I've been doing for so long. Mike knows that. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is what we do. We, we, we talk, we get it out. And we have many hats that we wear. Mm-hmm. But this is, this is, I was not expecting this. So I don't, you know. That's awesome. Uh, you, you you send me your information, and uh, uh, generally I work seventy hours a week outside the home. But on the weekends, on the evenings, I'm free, and I will message you back in any time, honey, any time. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Thanks. Alex, real quick, you want to give some uh, information where people can find you and how they can find the new show? Yeah. So um, the show is going to be on the Travel Channel. And it's going to air October 3rd at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's Thursday. And it's one of 10 episodes that will begin. And people can find me. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I don't even know why I bother, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) It's there. Why even? Why even? And then, of course, you can reach me at alexandraholzer.com. There's a contact form if people want to say whatever i don't know just nothing nasty i just i can't anymore i know right (laughs) there's no reason for what did i do to you i don't know right right doing what i do so all right well thank you so much for coming on this was a real a real treat it went so fast but um it was amazing so thank you very much well i love you guys and thank you for having me thank you we'll we'll talk yes we will all right have a fantastic evening take care you too guys